Rhino. Here you can see that I've um, oversprayed the, the dark green and uh, rust colors that I had put on previously. I covered that with a gloss coat, then hit the model with uh, AK Interactive heavy chipping. Um, then I hit the, uh, the model with my airbrush. Um, I painted US light gray, I think it was, with a Vallejo model air. I um, let that dry and I got ready to hit it with my toothbrush. Um, I wanted this to be in the Legion colors, um, but still be nurgly. Um, and what I mean by that is I want it to still kind of retain some semblance of it actually being a Death Guard Rhino, um, but showing that uh, Nurgle has blessed this Rhino with some corruption and decay. So I took my toothbrush, uh, dipped it in some water, and uh, dabbed it off a little bit on a t paper towel. And here you can see that I'm going around and um, not ex not forcefully, but I am uh, rubbing it up and down, back and forth, trying to get as much of the uh, top coat off as I can to bring out the bottom layer of the the olives and the drabs and the uh, the rust colors that I can. So that's what's going on on this side of the the rhino. Um, I'm doing the top. And what's important about doing the top in any part of a, a modern, or not some, sorry, not modern, but a, a military vehicle is to try to show wear and uh, tear at the points where it, it naturally would occur. This is what you're doing when you're using weathering pigments, but it's also the same concept when you're chipping and uh, doing something along those lines. Now, Nurgle is kind of, you know, you can get away with being super heavy and excessive um, but I am focusing on the top to show that uh, the wear and tear is um, from the Marines walking on top of it or the enemy clawing at it and scratching it as well um, the the top doors I, I took off so that I could do them separately um, but you know the the top doors open up it's also an access point and a, a part where you can uh, have models shooting out from the the vehicle in game terms so to me that kind of symbolizes another access point and point where a lot of heavy wear and tear would be would be done on the vehicle so that's that for that uh, i'm just going to keep going on and on um i'm um, scratching the paint off of the of the model but just the key the key here is just to try to keep it as uh natural as possible even though it is an Ergo Rhino. A lot of focus here is being done at the bottom of the of the Rhino, um, where the tracks would be, because I did take an X-Acto knife and chip up the model itself. Um, you want it to be heavily worn, and I wanted the metallics to kind of show through um, to show the chipping as well. Um, on the front, I did the same thing, obviously, just uh, re, re wetting the toothbrush. The toothbrush does need to be uh, re moistened as you go along. Um, the, the thing about the blisters and the boo boos that are on the front of it, um, they look like they're part of the vehicle itself, um, you know, and that's that's why. You kind of want to go that way when you add the gloss coat the next time um, you can brush paint over those and make them look more organic and uh, as a whole separate entity other than just being part of the, um, the rhino itself so it looks like crap at that particular point but once the gloss coat is applied to the uh, to the rhino the uh, those uh, blisters and stuff like that can be painted over and um, made to look organic instead of actually part of the the rhino. Um, so that's that was the interesting part about the AK Interactive and how it kind of makes things appear. Now I'm focusing on the other side of the Rhino, doing the same thing, 
just uh, scraping it along with uh, the toothbrush. I did knock off the one nurgling that's hanging from the pus sack there, so he's got to go back on. Uh, knocked off the other one a few times as well, but I, I really like how the nurglings kind of add character to the model and uh, distinct, make it distinctly nurgle um, without having to make the vehicle look like it's got a bunch of tentacles and all that kind of craziness that I don't find to be um, interesting, uh, even though it's 40k. So I'll just go along with that. Here I'm just going over again the model at the bottom part of the uh, running gear, um, going over bits and pieces of the actual Rhino, just double checking to make sure that I'm happy with the, uh, the damage that's being done to it and the corrosion that's supposed to be showing through to where I'm trying to take the model. Uh, this is the rear end of the, uh, of the Rhino. Uh, the ramp I painted the green stripe down the back, unfortunately I don't have the Forge World decals just yet so hopefully I'll be able to do something but I don't particularly do all the chipping in the rear. I'm going to be focusing with the washes and, uh, and taking them to make it look like it's streaking and stuff like that. But at the bottom, I definitely wanted the chipping because that's a natural point where the damage would be on the vehicle itself from excessive use. Okay, so here I think I'm a little happy with what I got with the chipping. I'm going over it one more time, and I'm going to be uh, focusing on how I'm going to attack the, the vehicle with washes and uh, bring out the other detail. So now I, I had gotten my washes together of Windsor Newton raw umber, and I made a wash of, um, it was raw sienna from Windsor Newton with um, pigments. Um, rust pigments that I had made. Uh, you can see that in a previous tutorial on how to make your own pigments. Um, I mixed that with uh, mineral spirits and I uh, got those ready for the next step of the of the tutorial. Um, I had already hit the model with the raw umber and now I'm working on it with that rust um, mixture that I had made going over areas that would definitely have rust. Uh, this is the first light coast coat of rust the shows um, newer rust with with rust and streaking and stuff like that um, I think one thing that people don't get the concept of or grasp uh, and I'm not trying to sound arrogant or cocky but newer uh, newer rust versus older rust that's been sitting on a vehicle for a while um, has different colors and newer rust tends to be a brighter more vibrant orange and older rust tends to be a deeper and um, a more darker orange almost brownish kind of color so here I'm gonna start off with the newer rust um, I always think that you should start off with the newer rust to um, just to just to uh, start off as a base and uh, I'll let that go for now Here you can see the streaking that I'm focusing on. 
um, on the on the rear ramp, I am just taking the uh, the pigment and wiping it down with a frayed brush with uh, clean mineral spirits and dragging it down and mixing the rust into the uh, the brown as well. Um, you can get the same effects with the AK interactive stuff that a lot of people like to use, and I do think that it's great stuff. Um, I just like to kind of keep things as cheap as possible so I can buy more models, especially since my um, Plague Marine Army is focused mostly on uh, Forge World stuff. So there you have it. That's uh, I'll just let you guys watch me apply the uh, the rust at the certain spots. Um, you know, if you have any questions or comments, um, leave them down below. Remember to check out everybody in the War Gamers Consortium. I'm going to list them below as well. And uh, you know, please feel free to subscribe, comment. And uh, definitely rate the video if you have any uh, tips or suggestions that I should uh, take into consideration for making my videos better or, you know, um, let me know. I, I, I'm here for you and I definitely, definitely want to keep this going and your, uh, your input definitely allows me to do that. So I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. Cheers.